here's a quick 400 IQ blender modeling trick. All right, I'm making this JBL you know, charge three or flip three or something for a customer. And it has this little rope hanging off the side. Now making rope and blenders easy as fuck. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? And by the way, if you wanna get your portfolio or projects professionally roasted by a team of professionals, then check the link in the comment section. So you have to do three things. First, you have to create a curve, which is going to dictate where the rope is going to go. Then you have to use an array modifier with a little cylinder to actually shape the uh, rope. And then you have to apply a simple texture, which is going to give you this little fabric material over here, which is gonna make it look like a rope. So let's start with the curve. First, you have to add a circle which has low polygons, all right? So something like eight vertices. Add a circle and you can set the number of vertices over here in the corner. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and this circle is going to be the part that shapes this part of the curve. If you look at it from the side, this kind of looks like a circle, but then it goes over to the other side. Now we're gonna delete this vertex so that we can take this side up and it can go over the two strings which then extend outside of the speaker, all right? And this is going to be the part that goes through and over to the outside, all right? This inner part is gonna do that. So we're gonna extrude this and take it out. As you can see, this part is gonna shape this thing hanging out here. And then we have to take this to the other side. So I'm just gonna place my 3D cursor here. I'm gonna mirror all this and scale it to minus zero, uh, one on the X axis. And as you can see, now I have this little shape which holds or where the rope kind of wraps around this little stick inside of the speaker. And now you just have two, uh, two little vertices over here which you can extrude out to make this part that hangs down from the speaker. And you can kind of try to make these two go around each other if you want to, you can make them kind of, you can make this one go under and come out on the other side if you want to make things a little bit cooler, if you want to complicate your project a little bit. And then you get to the fun part, which is this thing down here. And this, you just have to kind of manually place it however you, you think it's right. But I can see this knot, you can make a simple knot with two strings in real life. I already have this happening on my speaker so I can look at it as a reference. Otherwise, just look up knot or something. So the way this works is you have these two strings, they go down and they go under, all right? So they make like a little hook. We're gonna select them and from side of it, we're gonna shoot them like this, like this, like this. And then they go up, but they kind of move to the side, all right? and they move up to the side and then they go around, they go around and through this hole that we created, okay? They go around these two uh, ropes that we just pushed down. They're gonna come all the way around here and here like this. And now we just have to push them through this little gap here. And this is basically a little knot. Now I know you think this looks very clunky, but in a second we're gonna subdivide this curve so it's gonna look nice and smooth. Okay, so now we can also push these up and make them go in different directions down here. They're gonna hang in a slightly different direction if you wanna be cool, all right? And now you can just apply a subdivision surface modifier to this with control three or something. So now you have your basic shape ready for the curve and maybe you're gonna to wanna to adjust some things here. Maybe I'm, I want to make this a little bit wider perhaps like this. And I'm also gonna place it a bit better. I'm gonna place the 3D origin for this curve at the bottom here. So I'm gonna put the 3D cursor here. I'm gonna press, I have a shortcut for this, but normally you go to object, set origin, origin to geometry, okay? And now once we have the 3D cursor here, I'm just gonna add in a, a simple little cylinder with eight vertices like this. It has to be very short and make sure it doesn't have any face at the top or the bottom, okay? So now you can add an array modifier, which you're gonna stack on the Z axis by one. You can increase the count on that a little bit and also add a curve modifier. But you have to be sure to convert this to a curve because currently this is a mesh, all right? So apply the subdivision surface modifier to this, then go to object, convert and convert it to a curve. So now it's a curve. So now Blender is gonna recognize this as a path for the rope if we tell it to, all right? So now in your curve modifier, you can select this curve as the curve object. And of course, for some fucking reason, it flies over to the other side. But if I change the orientation to Z axis, now I should be able to place it somewhere. So it's at least a little bit more, a little bit more in place. All right. Sometimes I think this is because the origin has to be somewhere. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't set the origin properly. But if you have your origin exactly in the same place as the origin of your object, okay, and that should be at the beginning of the curve, then you shouldn't have this problem. Sometimes it still fucks up. All right. But usually it's going to work. And now just increase the count here and push it all the way through, all the way around. And you can see it's still kind of clunky. If you want to make it look smoother, let's look at it like this. You can make this thing a little bit uh, shorter like this. And it's gonna be a lot smoother. If you make it taller, you're gonna have less polygons, but it's not gonna look as nice, all right? So it's best to find some kind of nice little middle. 
I'm gonna go with something like this. Currently, this has 257 instances. So I can now apply the array modifier and I can apply the curve modifier. And if I just add smooth shading and I merge vertices by distance, so mesh merge by distance, now everything is perfectly connected and I have a little rope like this, okay? Now you have to add a texture for this, which is gonna create this kind of fabric effect. Now, I baked a normal map with a texture like this, all right? You can probably just go to textures.com and find fabric or something and download a normal map. I have one that I created myself. If I remember, I'm gonna put the link in the description where you can download this thing. I'm probably gonna forget. If I forget, let me know in the comments, Are you and you forgot to put the fucking texture download link and then I, uh, I'm gonna be able to put it there, okay? So, you're gonna create a new material for this object, shading, new, and let's set the color to some military green or something like this. And I have to add in, this is the image that I want to load, okay? Fabric normal map. I'm gonna create a new image texture node, and I'm going to load this fabric normal map that I have here in Blender, all right? I'm going to run this through a normal map node and make sure to change this color space to non-color, okay? Plug the color to color, normal to normal, and then you want to use your node wrangler. So go to edit preferences, add-ons, and type in a node wrangler. Check this box, this is gonna make mapping textures a lot easier. And then just press Control T on this and go object, connect object to vector and set this to box, all right? Now your texture is mapped on your string, you just have to tile it a little bit, so set the scale to something like 777, seven, seven, or maybe you can go even higher than that if you want to, all right? Mine is currently a little bit shiny, I don't want it to be that shiny. All right, let's check the normals on this too. Face orientation, the normals are inverted so we can correct the normals. And now it's going to look a lot, a lot nicer and it looks a bit like a rope. If you want to, you can also add these little ends down here. So you can select the last edge loops and press Control plus however many times you want to if you want to make this a little bit longer. Get my camera back here. Extrude, Alt S, make sure you don't have proportional editing. And we're gonna create a new material for this which is just going to be a black kind of shiny, shiny uh, material, some kind of rubber or something. We can also apply this material here if you want to split hairs. And I also want to mark my sharps here because I don't want this to have like a smooth angle here. So mark sharps and go to your auto smooth and set that all the way. And now you're gonna have some nice sharp corners. And that's how you make a rope in Blender. If you want to, if you want to make thicker rope, you can do that. If you want to wrap your own rope around something, you basically just model something with a subdivision surface modifier. Then you apply the modifier, you convert it into a curve. You just run a cylinder over that and you can use this type of normal map. You can make your own normal maps. Check out my tutorial for how to make normal maps for fabrics. I just made a tutorial the other day where I showed you guys how to do this. Or just download a rope normal map somewhere on the internet, right? Let me know what you guys want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.